All right, so this is part two of the sailboat build. If you're new to my channel, thanks for clicking on this video. I'm basically building myself a 15 foot sailboat and I'm documenting the process. If you haven't watched the last video, go check it out. I basically cut everything out and built the frame. And in this video, I'm working on supports made out of this one by four for each panel, mostly for the ribs and the transom. But I'll be doing that today and I will start the assembly process. So I'll actually start building the boat on the frame and actually start to look like a, a boat. To start off, I need to cut out all the corners and every single bulkhead. Then some wooden strips will be used for support running through these corners. You'll understand this a little better in the next few episodes. So now that I got each section, all the corners cut out, what I gotta do is I have to add reinforcements. So I don't know if you can see, but there's like these strips of wood on each side. So what I'm gonna do is I got some scrap one by four. So I'm gonna cut these down into the strips and I'm gonna start to reinforce each rib and the transom and all those. So I'll start with this rib or the second rib. So these two pieces will go on the very edge. Of course, they're hanging over, but what I'm gonna do is put this on the saw horses and just make lines where I need to cut, and I'll use the chop saw and the jigsaw to make these cuts. Then I will glue these in with Gorilla 5-Minute Epoxy and nail them in with galvanized nails. And then I'll continue with the rest of the border and with the strip straight down the middle to support the mast. All right, so this is what the piece looks like, and I'm just gonna get rid of this excess material. I'm gonna do the same for that piece. Then I don't wanna bore you guys, so I'm basically making eight or 12 of these, but they basically just go in each corner of all of these. But I'll just, I'll do a time-lapse for all these, and I'll just explain uh, how I'm assembling and reinforcing this, this rib. So now that I got each little section cut out, I'm gonna glue them with this uh, Gorilla Glue epoxy and I'm just gonna use some galvanized nails to just like tack all them in place, I guess. And then I got some paint cans over here just to keep them down. And then I'll go back over and finish reinforcing this bulkhead or rib. So while those are drying and setting, I'm just gonna take the one by fours and cut them into strips. The correct thicknesses for the edges and I'll just measure all the edges, add up the total measurement, and then I'll just nail and glue those in and finish off this rib. So I got all the reinforced edge pieces cut out and I'm just gonna attach them. I don't really want to bore you guys with another time lapse because I already have done a lot. So in the next scene, everything will just be attached and assembled and this piece will be almost done. I'm just going to add that center piece that goes right here. All right, so I got this metal support and I'm just going to attach it. I'm just going to make some strips that hold in the floor pins. So I'll use these. All right, so this bulkhead or rib is finished. Now all I got to do is do the same for the transom and the other rib. Now I'm working on the largest bulkhead which took the most amount of time, but in the end I think it turned out pretty good. This is a small rib that will support the floor. This bulkhead will support the front of the boat. This is another floor supporting rib, and this is the transom. So here's the hole finally cut out. This is just the bottom, obviously. Now the very next step is to cut out about 20 of these funky looking shapes. These will lock in each panel, and they'll go across the seams right here. So I'll do that right now using all that scrap wood, and then I'll use some epoxy and link this all together. And we'll finally start the assembly process on top of the front. Now that all the pieces are cut out, I'm just going to number them 1 through 10 and then number the piece of wood right in front of it and behind it just to keep them in the same place. I'm going to trace them out and then cut out those sections on the 
bottom of the hole so then those can fit in. I'll use some epoxy to attach all these together. So with more tracing, there always comes more cutting. So now I gotta cut out these sections right here so this can slip in and connect these two sections. Now you can kind of get what I'm doing. I'm just cutting out the sections for to call them the key to fit into the lock. That's the best description I can do. Anyways, I got the first and second one done. Now I'm heading on to the third and fourth one, and those should only take about 15 minutes to complete. So I'm using a jigsaw to make these cuts. You can complete it with the hacksaw, but it'll be pretty difficult to get a clean cut and will take much longer. To prep for the epoxy, I don't want to ruin the concrete in my backyard. So what I'm gonna do is I have this wax paper. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this down to the concrete and then lay the joints of each section on top of this paper, just so when the epoxy hardened won't stick to the concrete and ruin or anything. So I'll take this down and then I'll show you guys how to mix up your epoxy and how to use this. As you can see, I'm just cutting the interior of the key with epoxy as well as the interior of the area that it's going to fit into. Once in place, I just fill all the gaps with more epoxy. Alright, so it's the next day and everything is pretty much dried. Now I'm just going to go over with more epoxy and go over every single seam right here because it is cracking a little bit, especially on this line. And then tomorrow morning, when this is all dried, flip her over, add more epoxy and some wood filler just to make everything sturdier. Alright, so it's the next day and sorry I didn't film the last epoxy pour that I did. But basically I flipped the hole over and I removed the parchment paper. And now you can see the epoxy did its job in some areas. Like right here, it's really good, it's all filled up. But in some other spots like right here, here it didn't do that well what I'm gonna do is take a belt sander and just sand every joint right here in preparation for the wood filler which is like that play-doh looking stuff and so what I'll do is I'll cover everything with that wood filler flip it back over and pour more epoxy on it because that wood filler should fill up everything and the epoxy just should fill in the other gaps when I flip it over and then when I'm done with that I'm gonna move it on to the frame so I'm not too worried about removing all of the parchment paper. This is all going to be hidden in the storage area of the sailboat. All right, so with the bottom of the hole all sanded and nice and smooth now, just in the major cracks and crevices on the hole, I'm gonna add some total flare wood filler just to fill in those gaps so then when I flip it back over and add more epoxy it won't seep through and it'll make everything super strong. So I'm actually really shocked about how well this frying compound worked out. It's essentially a ladder consistency of play-doh and when mixed properly it turns into a very hard plastic. All right, so I just finished applying all the wood filler and now I'm just gonna let it dry for about an hour or two. Then when this is all dry, I'll sand it down, flip her back over and add more epoxy to finish her off and then I'll add her to the stand. So when the farin compound is fully cured and dried, you can start sanding it. It's pretty much like sanding a soft plastic at this point. All right, so now that everything's sanded, it's finally time to put it on the stand. Now that the bottom of the hole is on the frame, I'm just gonna give it a light sanding and add more epoxy. So I'll do that right now. All right, so finally, now it's time to add the very last bit of epoxy. I'm just gonna be adding it in these little cracks just to fill it up. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering what this is, this is the parchment paper, but this will be sanded off when I sand off the epoxy that I put in today. 
Alright, so to finish up part 2 of the sailboat build, I'm just adding more epoxy to fill all the gaps where the two pieces of plywood meet. Alright, so this is the end to part 2 for the sailboat build. I'm so sorry it's taking me this long to post this video, but hopefully the next few videos will be posted pretty shortly. If you uh, haven't noticed, I'm in the sailboat right now, so I am filming this three months after the original filming date. But anyways, with that, thank you guys for watching.